joining today on My Smart Tech TV. Today I'm joined by Christopher Clark, who is the CEO at Delta Drone International. So welcome, Chris. Thank you, Jess. Thanks for having me. No worries. Now tell me a little bit about you and what Delta Drone International do. So, um, Jess, I guess uh, st starting off with um, on, with myself, I'm, I would sort of say self-confessed sort of geek. Um, you know, we, we started this business about 10 years ago. Um, you know, walked onto a mine site and uh, there was this big broken drone on the floor in a thousand pieces. And uh, I remember saying to the chief surveyor at the time, his name is uh, Brad Shark, I said, Jock, you know, what, what happened here? And he said, look, he said, these very slick Canadian salesmen, they, they came in, they sold us this drone for 50,000 US dollars. And they told us it's the easiest drone in the world to fly. And I said, Jock, but what's it doing here on the floor in a million pieces? And he said, look, it was easy to fly. It just wasn't so easy to land. Yeah. And, and that really was kind of like the, so the, the birth of, of, of the business or the drones and the service sort of business model, model as it was 10 years ago. And, uh, and really we sort of, uh, you know, sort of took this business and, uh, and said, to, really said to Jacques, said, look, well, instead of you, you know I mean, wanting to fly a drone, because really at the end of the day, you just need the data. How about we operate it and, um, and uh, you know, uh, uh, fly it for you. And uh, that was on a BHP mine. And, uh, and now, you know, now we've grown the business to, to over about 25 um, corporate full-time contracts, um, probably about now next over 40 uh, enterprise customers, nearly 100 staff globally. So, yeah, I would, I would kind of say we're, we're a little company with really big ambitions and that, that really pumps sort of uh, punches above its weight, uh, as per se. And, uh, and, you know, we've uh, made the move over to Australia, which has always been in the planning um, for, for quite a long time, you know, to really take advantage of, of the local market. So, and the opportunities that exist here. And what was the main reason behind that, just that there is a lot of opportunity here? So, I guess when we um, originally started, so, so maybe for a bit of context, um, um, is that when we got here, we did a merger with a company called Parazero Limited, who listed on the ASX. Mm -hmm. Parazero has got some really great sort of drone safety technology. I kind of sort of put it as an airbag for your drone. So it, it really ultimately enables drones to fly over people and in urban spaces. Now, our previous experience in the drone as a service has always been in the rural mining, the agricultural kind of space. And, um, and what this is, um, you know, the sort of mergers allow us to do is, is really to, to start looking a little bit forward to say, you know, drones are only sort of creeping more and more into that urban space, sort of doing these drone deliveries. Um, and how do we sort of build a group and this technology as a whole that, that's going to address those needs? Because, um, you know, even, even Google, you know, even though they create a lot of this technology, eventually they don't want to operate it all themselves. You know, they kind of want to outsource it. And even the mines themselves, no one, everyone needs drone data, but they don't actually want to operate drones. Mm -hmm. So I guess the same way that IT systems and, uh, and other sort of business processes mature eventually over time and, and eventually get outsourced, you know, we, that, that's really how we've kind of sort of formed this opportunities to address this, this market. And uh, so that's a really kind of exciting space. And we, we've seen this demand and we've kind of just waited um, out. So we've got all our experience in Africa. We've, we've built up all this knowledge and uh, all this experience and, uh, and now bringing it over to Australia. Um, you know, we, we're taking the small steps and, uh, and as you know, we, we've done an acquisition with our Vista. So, and which helps us accelerate sort of two years uh, in terms of the business. And, um, and the market has responded quite positively. I think, I think people know who we are, you know, again, you know, people can relatively see our market cap and our size and uh, that we are a small business. But if you look at, you know, look at our revenues, um, I, I think there's still a lot of value there. Mm -hmm. And obviously you guys do some pretty advanced uh, things when it comes to drones, but for people who, who are listening, who maybe don't know that much about it on a basic level, what are some of the ways that drones can make an impact on society? Yeah, so I think, you know, generally when people think about drone technology, they all either think about these big, you know, military sort of, what you see in the movies, military style, you know, sort of shooting people on the ground, or you're thinking of the consumer grade drones, the ones you buy off the shelves, these little sort of, uh, you know, annoying sort of things buzzing above your head. And actually we operate in the middle, which is sort of that unknown sort of uh, professional sort of space. And, uh, and, and that's, and that's, you know, so these medium sort of size drones are, are going anywhere from about 30 to, to 40, $50,000. And uh, so they really are rated to conduct this lot more sort of engineering or survey grade 
um, kind of operations. Um, because actually, again, at the end of the day, the customers need that data to calculate volumes, you know, detect cracks. And if they do find a crack, how big is this crack? For example, which can be very important on, on inspecting wind turbines. So, you know, drones are really, you know, I mean, their first and foremost use has been taking people out of out of harm's way, you know, removing people from the pit or from, you know, having to climb really tall towers. And that's 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 been the really the sort of the first embracing of it. And uh, and what we're kind of seeing is that now, you know, the sort of professional grade uh, type of drones is, is really becoming more autonomous um, over time. So, you know, again, having drones operate sort of 24 seven and keeping, um, you know, these inspections and these surveys, um, you know, even going into the night or even going underground, you know, going into places where, uh, where people can't go. Mm, I imagine that would make a massive impact on safety. I mean, yeah, that's incredible. Um, and, and what about some of the kind of advanced ways that, um, that you guys are kind of making a difference on, you know, mining and agricultural sites? Yeah, I guess with that, um, I give away to too many of the customers of projects, but there's some really cool things. Um, you know, we, we're working currently with a customer at the moment um, in terms of precision agriculture and precision, precision spraying. So the, the biggest competitor at the moment right now, for example, is, is like John Deere. And what happens is that um, a sprayer on a farm is the most used piece of equipment. And, uh, and John Deere's got a solution, for example, to like a, it's quite a, you know, if you ever looked at a sprayer, you know, the conventional ways that you would just sort of uh, hook up the spray and you sort of just do this uniform sort of spraying along the farm and you just spray everything equally, right? And uh, and ideally, the idea behind precision spraying, precision ag, is that you only spray where you, where you need to at a time. Now, John Deere will have, for example, like a little camera on, on their piece of neck, their sprayer. They, they, they sort of sprayers have to drive very, very slowly. The sprayer detects little weeds and, uh, and then calculates it and, and then sprays. But the problem is that you can't operate that at night because I guess the cameras can't see the weed. Mm -hmm. But now where drone technology is getting involved is that you can fly a drone the day before. Because you're flying relatively very high, you're capturing large areas very quickly. And, and because you're flying lower than manned aircraft or even satellite technology, you're generating very high resolution geospatial data, which can then be input into a new generation of sprayers, which can drive, can drive 10 times faster, can drive through the night, and um, and uh, and really allow uh, farmers to to achieve a lot more efficiency and use less chemicals and, and obviously save more money. So it's really, I guess, drones is is a particular tool that's being used in really exciting kind of industries. And we're only kind of seeing those 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 proof of concepts really coming to commercial fruition, um, you know, more recently. And where do you see the industry heading in the next five years? What are some of the things that are, you think will start happening? Yeah, I think that's the most exciting space. You know, this um, drone industry is moving so incredibly fast. And I, I, I personally, um, you know, there, there's sort of two angles in which it's going. Number one, it's, again, the drones are only becoming more sort of urbanized. So we're seeing drones with uh, longer battery life, hydrogen power, um, again, all these safety technologies to allow drones to, to access um, the urban sort of areas. We're seeing skyscrapers in Sydney now being designed with little drone landing pads outside your apartment, if you can believe it, they, they are coming. So, so, so that's on the one side from the, from the urban region. And, um, and then what we're also seeing is, is the, the sort of the world of the micro bots, you know, where you, you know, um, where the military's got these really large, you know, any one ton kind of um, uh, drones. And again, speaking to this middle ground of, of drones, you're going to start finding, um, I guess, very similar to how you we have little vacuum cleaners that are very autonomous driving around your house. I don't know if you have one of those, Jess, but um, Robo um, ones. not yet, but I, I did want one. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, while you have those are consumer products, you know, there's going to be the professional version, right? The middle, again, the middle sort of ground of where you're going to have robots and drones working together, collaborating, where drones are going to have the high ground be able to detect things really, really quickly, and then be able to also deploy robots to go and do that final sort of task inspection, turn a valve, check, you know, check what's the reading on a, on a meter. So, um, you know, you know, those are, is how we kind of see this ecosystem sort of evolving. And for people listening, and if they want to connect with you guys and get involved and find out more, what do they do? So they can, they can go to our website on blti.com.au or also on Twitter on Chris Clark Live. Great. And final question, um, what's in the future for you guys? What, are you, what What's on the cards for the Delta Drone International? 
So, you know, in the short run, we're obviously focusing on, on expanding in the Australian market, um, you know, really so bedding down, but our long-term goals is to be within the top three drone global drone service providers. So, um, yeah, I would definitely say watch, watch the space. I think uh, there's been some exciting things to come. That's awesome. Well, thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. And um, yeah, we'll definitely put some links in the show notes for people to find out more. Thank you, Jess. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you.